My wife had a dream that we were actually in Africa, paving the way, helping people return back to Africa. Welcome to Message from the Motherland. So we are here for episode two of Message from the Motherland, you guys. Like I said in the first episode, we've put in a lot of work to get to the point that we are at right now. And we are here ready to do episode number two and get to the work and get the message out and let people know what's going over here on the continent, all right? So yeah, guys, I want to talk about how I literally dropped everything and decided to move to Africa. Like there was a point in time where this was just a dream. This was something that I really didn't think that I was capable of doing, but I really decided to just drop everything and make it happen with coming to the continent of Africa, all right? Um, I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds like when I tell people that I literally dropped everything, they're like, hold on. Like there's no way that you just got rid of all your things and decided to make that move. But yeah, I'm going to give you all a little bit of the backstory of what I did with my family when we made the decision to come to the continent of Africa. So at the time of the pandemic and everything, we were, um, you know, in the process at the time, our lease was about to be up at the house that we were living in. So my wife and I, we decided to go house hunting for, I would say, one day. Literally, we decided to go and look around around in different neighborhoods and see, you know, what where we could move and where we would be comfortable at. And I would say we went to like three or four different neighborhoods and we didn't even get out of the car and we didn't even really feel like looking around because it was like we just felt the weight of, man, something not right in this society. We knew that any neighborhood that we decided to move into, that it wouldn't be a safe place for us to really live in because, um, you know, a lot of the times, a lot of the Europeans within the Western society, they get away with treating us nefariously and doing harmful things to us as, as black people and to our families. So we had the weight of having to live amongst them on our shoulders as we were looking for someone to somewhere to live so yeah we didn't feel comfortable in any of the neighborhoods that we were looking in and we literally like we said to each other like we don't know what's going on but we're just gonna pray and ask god you know which which, where should we move to and what should we do and in the midst of us you know praying and asking god what should we do uh my wife actually had a dream my wife had a dream that we were actually in Africa, paving the way, helping people return back to Africa. When we In her dream, she saw that we were in a wooded area like the wilderness or something like that. And in that wilderness, she heard a whisper in her ear, told her to go and pave the way. And we were walking together. And she said in the distance, in the background, she could see the mountain of Kilimanjaro. So my wife had that dream and she told me the story. And when she told me that story, it literally was like a no brainer. Soon as she said it, I was like, you know what? That's exactly what we need to do. It's time for us to go to Africa. Because, you know, initially we had talked about possibly coming to Africa when it was time to retire, when we got older, when we finished what we were doing in America. Then we were going to come to the continent of Africa a little bit later. So, we didn't expect it to be in 2020 when we had just had a child and when we had just started our business, when we were just, our business was just beginning to rise and we were like really stepping up into a new role in our lives. And like we got the call and the mission and the vision to come to Africa. So yeah, in that time, um, it was a no brainer, man. My wife was like, let's go to Africa. Let's see what this is about. Let's see if we can make this happen. And we literally, After we made the decision to come to Africa, after we talked in the car about making the decision to come here, literally, we booked the flights. Like, I would say, like, the next day, we booked the flights for three weeks out, away from that day when we booked it. And when we booked the flight, we literally tried to sell everything that was in our house. 
We sold the TV. We sold the furniture. We sold like uh, my wife had this very nice. It's, it's something like a picture frame, but it was like some nice frame that she had. And there was a lot of people inquiring about it while we were living in the U.S. They were like, hey, if you ever want to sell it, sell it to me. If you ever want to get rid of this thing, sell it to me. And we ended up selling that. We sold like literally everything that we could. And what we couldn't sell, we actually put it on the side of the road and gave it away to whoever wanted to get it. So like our last, the last day that we were here, I mean there, we actually had like, I would say, maybe maybe 10 maybe 10 items left and we put that all on the side of the road we had went to plato's closet we sold some of our clothes we sold our clothes on facebook marketplace we sold our clothes on this thing called offer up we sold it on craigslist anywhere that we could sell it we sold it and whatever we could get in to be able to have enough funds for us to make the trip to the continent we just took it all in and we got all we could and left what we could give away we gave it away and Man, that last day, we had a group of our friends come and help us um, finish straightening up the house as we were leaving. And they literally, like, we had some friends finish up the house for us. The house wasn't even finished being, like, packed fully before we actually left. So we got a friend of ours that was there, like, still helping us finish packing up the house, finish cleaning up the house while we were on the flight leaving to come to Africa. So uh, I know many of you may be thinking, like, okay, why... um, You know, why come to Africa? Why not just stay in America? Why not just, if you had a business, if you had a company that you were working on, if your family was already working on things, why not just stay in America and deal with it and build something? I want to talk about, um, there's a, and I'm going to show a picture of this as well. There's a list of massacres that we have, we've dealt with as a people in the United States of America. There's a... On this list, I would say there's almost 20 20 to 25 black massacres that occurred within the United States of America. And what's a massacre? A massacre is basically when a whole bunch of people were murdered. Like there was there are several instances where, uh, you know, Europeans came into our communities and literally had a field day and murdered a bunch of our people. And people literally do not talk about in history is is not shining a light on those type of activities so i didn't want to keep my family in that type of environment like i lived in an environment where okay slavery existed before of course before i came around but a story about what happened um like i say the town that i lived in slavery once existed in that area so me trying to be a family man and trying to do things properly one day, I want. I decided to take my family to a park in America. I decided to, you know, let me take my children, my, like a place like this. You know, outside is beautiful, it's peaceful, it's relaxing. But in America, you can't just enjoy the peacefulness of the outside because, let me tell you why. So, like I said, I was trying to take my family to enjoy the evening and we were going to go and have a good time and enjoy the outside. So we went to a park in America and the park was basically an old plantation it was an old plantation that they had changed changed into a park so that means the spirit that the plantation had the spirit that our people had to deal with the spirit that was going on during that time was still lingering in that environment so i took my family there and and was trying to just go take my family on the scroll I had my stroller with me. I had my wife with me. We had just gave birth, like maybe T3 was maybe one month or two months old. And I'm pushing the stroller, man. And um, as we're leaving, you know, the police come into the park and they see me getting ready to leave with my family. So as I'm loading my car, I put my son in the car seat in the car and I pick up a stroller and put it in the trunk of the car close my trunk and I decide to pull off. I see the police there looking and I'm like, oh, well, I'm not doing anything. Let me just go and mind my business. So as I'm leaving, the police get behind me and accuse me of stealing things and taking things from people in the park. So I'm with my family. I'm clearly not causing anyone any harm. And he said I look suspicious because I decided to drive off while he was there. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, 
if I see the police there and I've done something, why would I drive off and get in front of them? That doesn't make me suspicious. That makes me stupid. Because why would I put myself in the environment to get caught if I'm stealing something? So in his mind, I look suspicious and because I was trying to escape from him and get in front of him and leave. So I had to deal with that being profiled. He actually got out of the car, pulled us over, and, um, you know, illegally took my picture and accused me of stealing things. And I didn't like that feeling of feeling helpless in front of my son and my son having to experience that. Like, that's not something that I, I want to pass down. I remember having to experience seeing my father get arrested in front of me. I saw my father get handcuffs put on him and have to go to jail. And that was a traumatizing experience. So I would hate for my son to have to see me have to go through something like that. And unfortunately, in that environment, you have a greater chance of running into those type of circumstances because the system that's put in place, it gives people that have certain powers that they think they have to do things to you to antagonize you to make you feel a certain way and to make you react in a certain way if you're not strong in your morals and your actions so yes we did have a successful business that we were building at the time but i knew that i had to put my family in a better situation for us to grow and thrive and when god presented that to me i knew that it was time for me to get out of that environment and go and do something new Many of us are trying to continue to beat the dead horse of trying to revive a system and revive a place that has shown us countless times that they do not care about us. You recently saw the list of the massacre that I showed you, the massacres that I showed you guys, and it doesn't change. There's at this very moment, I've seen stories about, you know, we hear that Chicago is so-called the murder capital of the United States of America. It's a lot of killings going on in America. I mean, in Chicago. But I've learned that a lot of the killings come from the, like people come from the suburbs with like masks on their faces and go into the city spaces and are committing those crimes to our people to make it seem like that is us doing it. Now, of course, there are some things that our people are doing to each other that's not good. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend and say, you know, oh man, our people are, you know, it's all kumbaya with our people. No, unfortunately, some of our people are products of the environment that we're in as well, that they're in. So by them being in that environment and being stuck in survival mode, it's causing them to feel like they have to cause harm to their brothers and sisters or cause harm to people in order to reach a certain level within that society. So I feel like, in my opinion, and what you know, what God has called me to do and what I felt in my spirit that Africa is the best place for me and my family to be able to set something up. Since I've decided to leave four years ago, I feel, like I said in other um, podcast episode, I feel weight lifted off my shoulder, man. I feel like I can be myself. I feel like I can be fully black and I can embrace my roots and embrace who I really am. In that environment, you're not afforded that privilege of being able to be fully you. They make you tuck that in over there. So me being here, I knew that, you know, I would be putting my son in the best environment to be successful. I knew I would be putting him in the best environment for him to become the best version of himself. himself. Because the ultimate goal for me as a father is to put my children and my grandchildren in the best place for them to be successful. So now I've been here almost four years. We've, man, my wife and I, we've had the privilege of creating, oh man, we've created two beautiful children. My daughter was actually born over here in Africa. So I have a daughter who's actually Tanzanian. So yeah, so since I've been here, life has changed in a way that uh, I pray that all my brothers and sisters get to experience. I pray that those who are looking for peace, safety, healing, understanding, I pray that you look into Africa and you know remove the veil of the lies that we've been told for decades and centuries. We've been lied to about what's over here in Africa. We've been lied to about the possibilities. We've been lied to about the opportunities. So what I'm feeling, I pray that all my people get to experience this because we deserve it. We've been through a lot with what we've gone through in that environment. And it's time for us to try something new. So I'm able to come over here and be a trumpet and be a loud voice to my people to let them know what's possible and what we can do. 
So, um, yeah, I dropped everything, man. And I know somebody's watching this is thinking about doing it. And you can do that. But you have to still make sure you make a plan and make sure you're doing things properly and make sure you are being a good person. Because coming to Africa is not just the answer. There's still work that needs to be done. We came up in an environment that's nefarious, that's toxic, and it causes us to act in ways that's not... It's very detrimental to what we are trying to do. So you have to unlearn a lot of the things that we've learned once you come to Africa. You have to unpack a lot of the mess that we've learned so that you can be able to fully embrace being here and understand what it means to make it to the continent of Africa, to make it back to the motherland. So I dropped everything, man. I'm going to keep saying it. Somebody need to hear it so it can hit home, man. You can drop everything too. But have a clear cut plan and make sure you trust God in the process. Stay focused on your mission. And like I said in the last episode, and I'm going to keep touching on the same things to hit home. We are supposed to become the best version of ourselves for our bloodline to pass it down. Us coming here is sort of cracking the cheat code of reaching another level and removing yourself from a toxic, toxic environment that's holding you back. Once you're able to think freely and think clearly, you're able to move in a way that you can create things and create a path for your family and your children and your children's children. So I've been able to, and fortunate enough to create, you guys see the body of work from the YouTube videos. Um, you know, my son is actually like, he's the, the reason, part of the, the reason why we're doing what we're doing. Like the hosting site for this right now is T3andMe, so... This all started with a small video of me and my son having an interaction. And now it has grown to us inspiring people to come back to the motherland of Africa. So trust the process and trust the journey and never underestimate or downplay an experience that you may have. Because that experience that you have will catapult you and push you into the direction that you need to go. So we are we are looking for a new way to be, looking for somewhere to go, looking for a new healing. And I challenge my people to, once again, look into the motherland. Look and see what you can do over here. Look and see what your gifts can catapult you into. And you can use your gifts to help you do over here. It's time for us to give up on America. Straight up. Like, it's okay. There's other countries in the world where we can do things at, y'all. America's not the end-all, be-all. It taught us a lot, yes. We learned a lot, yes. But there, we need a new environment for us to reach that point that we are trying to reach. And why not come back home to Africa where it all started, where civilization started, where everything began so that we can put our families in the best positions that we need to put them in. So come in here, man. You'll get to your best level as as the highest as the highest level that you want to reach within your bloodline. It's possible here. We can make it happen and I've seen it. I've seen people make it happen and I'm a witness to it happening. So I just want to reach back and let my people know that you can do it too. You know, take advantage of what you have and Use it to the best of your ability, y'all. Um, uh, got a quote that I want to share with you guys. Your purpose does not ask for anyone else's permission. Your purpose do not, does not ask for anyone else's permission. When I decided to leave America, when I decided to come to Africa. I didn't literally, I told a few of my family members, but I didn't broadcast the message and let, let the world know what was going on because I knew that people were trying to talk me out of it. And I knew I didn't need anyone else's permission. A lot of us seek validation from those around us and we won't, you know, we feel like, okay, I got to go with a group of people or I got to go with, you know, such and such or them and them. They got to come with me in order for it to be validated. But in actuality, when God gives us a calling, when God tells us to do something, it's not a conference call. It's a one on one call with you and God. Maybe if you're married, your spouse is involved, too. But for the most part, it's just you and God getting that call. So 
your purpose, everyone isn't going to understand that. And you have to be okay with that. You don't you don't need anyone's permission to do what God told you to do. And if God is telling you to look into Africa and make way for you to get to Africa and you feel like negativity towards Africa, you have to know that that was planted in you. Like the negativity that we feel, the negativity that we hear, all of that has been planted by a group of people strategically to stop this moment from happening, to stop you from feeling the realness and to stop you from taking advantage of what's over here for us as a people. So you have to fight that. Listen to the sound of my voice and fight that as much as you can and look into what's possible over here. I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds weird to hear somebody coming from America to Africa and saying, do this. But listen, trust me, it's a different type of healing. It's a spiritual healing that I know all of us are looking for as a people right now because God wouldn't have me talking like this if it wasn't what it what it is. So you have to fight that fight and fight that call for your family and make it happen and get over here. It's opportunity here. It's nothing but space and opportunity. And the time is now for Africa to rise. And we, us that come from America, we have a particular skill set that could be of great benefit if we came over here and partnered with our brothers and sisters in order to speed this thing up for Africa to get to the place that they need to be. So if you feel a calling, if you feel something within your spirit, do what you need to do and make it happen and come over here and experience this. Let go of the vices, let go of what's holding your mind, what's holding your heart, what's holding your spirit and take advantage of the opportunity internationally. We are international business men and women. We can take advantage of these opportunities, but you just have to believe that you can and believe that you are capable of it. You've been taught that you're not, but actually you are. Just use your mind. If we built that place, we can build the world again. We built the world anyway, so we need to tap into that and do what we need to do as a people. If you made it to the end of the podcast, your purpose doesn't need anyone's permission. Do what you need to do. Follow your purpose, follow your dream, and become the best version of yourself so your bloodline can benefit from that, all right? Y'all stay safe out there. Shalom.